Good afternoon and welcome to Let's Chat with Dr. Sess. I'm your board certified family medicine physician specializing in urgent care ISIS busy professionals to find solutions for their acute and chronic medical needs through my concierge medicine program, virtual medicine program. In addition to that, I'm a national speaker and recent Amazon bestselling author. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Hi, Dr. Janine. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I thought that we'd go on at a special time today, guys, trying to go on a little bit early because we don't want to interrupt any kind of Mother's Day celebrations. I know that today is a day that we give recognition and appreciation and celebration to our mothers for all of the wonderful things that our mothers do. So we just wanted to still try and add some value and share with you guys some tips and some information that will be helpful to you. We're going to share three tips. Um, for you to kind of be aware of to help decrease the likelihood or help to assist anyone if you should be around someone that could be having a stroke. We want you to be able to recognize these things and be able to call 911 because getting someone treated very quickly for a stroke is one of the biggest things that we can do to help decrease the amount of stroke that we have throughout the country. So let's talk about it. Why are we talking about stroke right now? Well, Stroke in America kills about 150,000 people a year. It is the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. Uh, the other part of that is that 80% of those strokes are preventable. So very important for us to bring awareness to this topic. May is Stroke Awareness Month, so that's why we're sharing that topic with you today. One of the biggest things we can do in terms of prevention is awareness. So we're sharing with you three tips for you to keep in mind, to share with your family members, and for you to know so that if you should be in that position, you know when and where and what to do and why. Okay, so there are two types of strokes generally that people have. There is an ischemic stroke, and that is a stroke that typically occurs because there's a block or a blockage of some sort in the blood vessel that decreases the blood flow to that part of the brain tissue. So that's called an ischemic stroke. There's also a, what we call a hemorrhagic stroke, and what that means is that that blood vessel has burst and compromised the blood flow to the brain tissue at that particular blood vessel. Both of these types of strokes can cause the same similar symptoms though, um, in these particular individuals, when they have a stroke, that part of the brain tissue begins to die as a result of lack of oxygen to that portion or tissue of the brain. So with that disturbance in blood flow, there are a couple things that can happen. You can have brain damage, it can lead to disability, and it also can even lead to death. Uh, stroke is the number one leading cause of long-term disability. So us being aware of these things are things that would help to hopefully decrease this number and risk. We want to get a away from that average of 150,000 people in our country that suffer with a stroke. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to know is that every moment counts. Every little second, every little minute counts. There's certain treatments and modalities that we treat patients that we feel are having strokes. And the time factor is very, very critical. So it's so important the minute that you notice that someone is having these symptoms to call 911 right away. Don't try and drive them yourself. Just dial 911 right away so we can get them to the hospital as soon as possible because some of these um, treatments can make a difference in whether or not that person, the level of complication, if any, that patient has as a result of the stroke. So we want to act fast, that's F-A-S-T. Acting fast can help. We want to get them to the ER again quickly to redu reduce the likelihood of any kind of brain damage. So let's go over that acronym FAST. That's something that we posted a little bit earlier this week as part of uh, our effort with stroke awareness. And so it starts off with F, facial drooping. If you notice an individual that has one side of the face that's kind of droopy, that's not similar or um, doesn't look like the other side, that could be facial drooping. That is one of the symptoms of stroke. The second is A, and that stands for arm weakness. Everyone, if you if you are there with someone and you're like, oh, are they having a stroke or not? These are some of the things that you can say. They should be able to raise both their arms up the same way. If they can't raise one of their arms, that's a sign that they may have arm weakness. The S is for slurred speech. 
So what you want to do if you think, oh, is, you know, is my mom, is my grandma, could they be having a stroke? You want to give them a simple sentence to repeat. And so sometimes it can be something as simple as the sun is shining today. They, you should be able to hear them say that with the same tone that you typically hear them say it. If their words are garbled or the speech is slurred, that's a sign that that patient could be having a stroke. And the T stands for time. That means it's time to call 911. So if you have someone in your family with facial drooping, arm weakness, or slurred speech, enact the T. It's time to call 911 right away. And there's no way for you to know for sure. And, and you know, don't hesitate like, uh, I'm not sure they're having a stroke. It's better for us to act on the side of caution and make that phone call so that we can help save that life then because we'd much rather say hey mrs johnson you're not having a stroke then oh mrs johnson you were having a stroke and we didn't dial 911 so we want to make sure that we act pretty quickly that's facial drooping arm weakness and slurred speech um, you want to act that ask them to smile raise both their arms and ask them to repeat that simple sentence so with that ladies and gentlemen let's talk a little bit about the risk factors for stroke now Three of these risk factors um, are very common uh, in the African-American community. And in the African-American community, there is a high percentage of stroke in patients that have a combination of these three. I call them the triple threat. And that is high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol. And so the reason that we term them the triple threat is because they do form a triple threat. They increase your risk of having a heart attack as well as having a stroke. We know that hypertension is the silent killer. This is something that we have to make sure that we monitor on a regular basis. If you have family history of stroke, that means that you may be at an increased risk for having a stroke. So monitoring your blood pressure it would be so, so important. Secondly, if you have high cholesterol, if you don't know your numbers, we need to know our numbers. We need to know what our cholesterol levels are so that we can treat that risk factor. The way that we decrease the risk of stroke is treating these risk factors and keeping them under control. This helps to mitigate or decrease the risk of stroke. So we want to make sure we're knowing our numbers with our cholesterol, with our blood pressure, and then lastly with our blood sugar. Anyone that is diabetic, if you have family history of diabetes, this means you're more likely. So you definitely need to make sure that you're screened for diabetes on a regular basis if you have family history of that. So treating these three and keeping these three under control, I cannot tell you how important it is. And that's something that I go into great detail in my brand new book, Vitality, which is an Amazon bestseller. Thank you guys so much for all of your support to getting us there but there's a chapter in the book that I want to dedicate to my mom um, where we talk about helping to decrease risk of heart attack and stroke and I'm so happy and proud of my mom because she follows these things religiously with her exercise watching her diet trying to make sure she's following her following her blood sugar to keep these things under control which decreases her risk and she is doing phenomenal do you hear me phenomenal I hate that I can't see her today because of COVID but if you're listening mom happy Mother's Day and I love you and this Vitality book is dedicated to you um, so if you guys want to pick up a copy, you can find that on my website. So a couple of other things that we do environmentally that increase our risk of stroke, and we want to make sure we pay attention to these measures and don't do these things if you have started already, but smoking increases your risk of having a stroke. Drinking alcohol heavily increases your risk of having a stroke, and not exercising increases your risk of having a stroke. So we want to make sure we mitigate these risks, and by doing that, so no smoking, heavy drinking we want to make sure that we stay active and that we exercise you know that 150 minutes of cardiovascular activity a week helps to decrease heart disease and stroke risk so we want to make sure that we get that in it also helps to build your immunity so we want to make sure that we're exercising. In addition to that, we need to know our numbers. We need to know our blood pressure numbers, our blood sugar numbers, and our cholesterol numbers. And again, those tips that we're going to remember to help decrease the risk of stroke in ourselves and our loved ones, the things that we want to look out for is that facial drooping, the arm weakness, as well as the slurred speech. And then T, it's time to call 911. So that's all we have to share with you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to help bring in a, some awareness to this so important topic, especially because we're seeing strokes in people at younger and younger ages. And so if we can help mitigate some of these risk factors, like the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the high cholesterol, that also helps to decrease the risk of heart attack or stroke. So 
Just wanted to pop on just for a few minutes. I know it's Mother's Day. Please go out and celebrate your mothers. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Hi, my sister's on. Happy Mother's Day, Rubia. Hi, my sis, uh, I, I is on. Happy Mother's Day, I, I. And then I see Miss Taylor is on. She said, can that dead brain tissue be restored? I'm not a, now on a blood thinner for the duration of my life. Now, once that there is a, and so what she's talking about is the dead brain tissue that when you have a stroke, you decrease that blood flow to that portion of the brain. That is why it's so critical to get to the hospital right away so that there can be reperfusion, what we call reperfusion of that particular area of the brain. And whether or not you get that particular part of it back, you usually find that out within the first few weeks following a stroke. Uh, another thing to add here is if you've had a stroke before, that means you're at increased risk for having a stroke again. So that means it's even more important that we mitigate or control those other risk factors like the high blood pressure, the diabetes, and the high cholesterol. And making sure that we're seeing our physician on a regular basis so that we, these numbers um, can be checked on a regular basis and so that you know where you are. Um, so. Whether or not there's restoration, typically Ms. Taylor is determined within the first few weeks following a stroke. Uh, and a, a lot of times it depends on the kind and the severity of the stroke that you have as to what kind of blood thinner that we put you on and how long that you have to be on it. Oftentimes there's some stroke patients that will remain on, on a blood thinner for the rest of their life. So I'm sorry about that, but I encourage you to uh, make sure that you control those risk factors so that we decrease the likelihood that you will ever have a stroke in the future. And I hope that you're exercising because that goes a long way to do that. But make sure you do so under the supervision of your physician. Hi, Miss Blake. Thank you so much for joining. Happy Mother's Day. My mom is on. Hi, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Uh, happy Mother's Day, Dr. Janine. Hi, Dr. Jaquel. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, so that's all I had to share with you guys today. Uh, I hope that everyone has a happy Mother's Day. Please go out and celebrate your mothers and enjoy the beautiful day. It's beautiful here in Birmingham. Um, and sun is shining bright. So get out and get some vitamin D. I still encourage you to social distance and make sure you wear that mask covering and uh, following that um, social distance of six feet. So that's all I have to share. Again, uh, if you want to enjoy some more of these great tips, please feel free to get a copy. Uh oh, that's the backside of my brand new book, Vitality, which you can find on my website that's listed in the chat. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. And again, I'm Dr. Celeste. I'm your board certified family medicine physician, national speaker, Amazon bestselling author, and I assist busy professionals to find healthcare solutions for both their acute and chronic medical needs through my virtual and concierge medicine programs. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Have a good day. Okay.